Welcome everyone to the MMA Happy Hour. I am Kyle Anthony, your host for today. We are talking UFC 303. We've got Alex Pereira versus Yuri Perhoshka, the rematch. We're going to dive into four plays on this card with my guy, Clint. Listen, this guy, Clint, how you doing, man? How you feeling? How you doing? How are things going, man? Glad to have you on today. Doing good, man. Thank you for the invite. Always love talking fights with you, so appreciate being here. It's uh, it's only Wednesday, and we've only got about half the props, so I'm a little irked mm -hmm. about that. But besides that, I'm good to go. Looking forward to the fights this weekend. Awesome, awesome. So before we dive into, uh, first we're going to talk the main event, but I want to let everybody know real quickly, on Twitter, I am doing a giveaway this weekend. I'm going to be announcing it today. It's going to be for this little gem here. This little gem here, Alex Pereira rookie card. It's a perfect 10 gem mint condition. Got it here. If you can see the uh, somewhere around there, the perfect 10 there. Um, so uh, going to be giving that out and uh, look for instructions on Twitter. Going to be giving that out there. It's going to be picking basically who the winner is in the main event and what round. So jump over to Twitter after you watch this, get involved and... Uh, Maybe we're going to be giving out the winner right here, right now. So um, first thing we're going to talk about here today is going to be Alex Pereira versus Yuri Prohoshka here. And this is a rematch from UFC 295, a fight that I was at. Awesome fight overall. Loved it. Great, you know, environment there. It was electric. And then it started to be a little bit of, uh, hey, was it? stopped early was you know was it a little bit of an early call here so we've got the line roughly around the minus 140 mark you got yuri here short underdog here so uh clint how do you see this one going down here in the main event and uh do you see it being uh, much different from the first one yeah actually i see it being a lot different from the first one man that's uh that's kind of a common theme with mixed martial arts fights. A lot of people see it one time and they're like, oh, that's it. It can never happen any other way. And then you get weird stuff like heavyweights going the distance and stuff like that. So you just never know what's going to happen. These fighters are smart. They're high level. They will make adjustments based off the experiences they had in the first fight. So I'm expecting new wrinkles. I definitely don't think this is going to look like the first fight. Actually, I think this fight is, uh, it's Yuri's, man. I've already got a bet on the dog here in this spot. I'm going with Yuri for the upset. I think he's going to have made some adjustments with the way he approaches Poetan in there and uh, the grappling he was getting going in the first fight seemed to be pretty effective it was working well you make one mistake with Alex Pereira you catch that left hook and you're done so I think he's going to be a little bit more sound a little bit more technical maybe a little bit uh, less aggressive and if he plays that kind of a game we could see this fight going a little deeper. I kind of feel like we're going to get into like the second, third, maybe fourth round of this fight. But eventually, uh, I do think the grappling of Yuri is going to end up being a little bit too much. And I kind of think he's going to finish prayer in this one. Oh, is there is there a round that you like or or you're just you're just playing the, the KO? I'm looking at I'm looking at three. I think it's going to be round three, man. Um, just a prediction. The bet is straight up on Yuri's money mm -hmm. line. I think there's plenty of value in that number. You know, everybody and their mom is rushing to the window to bet Alex Pereira at this point because of what they saw last time. But that number is coming down on Yuri. So the money is on the dog side here. And uh, I'm feeling pretty good about having plus 145 in my pocket right now. Yeah, that's a great, great number. Great number on that. You've, you've done your part. You've got a, a good ticket in your pocket there. And that's the one thing here with this is that, you know, going down, breaking this one down. The big thing for me was, how can it be different? You know, what is the change that Yuri brings? Now, it's not that Yuri was got ran over in that fight by any means. I mean, like you said, it was very competitive. You know, the strikes landed was 38 to 30. Alex, obviously close, plus a takedown for Yuri. And then as to your point, he gets caught, fight over. And, you know, all that other happens where it's, you know, was it short, uh, you know, a little quick uh, on the trigger there to, to call it. But you look at the fight and, you know, I think the first thing for me really is, the takedowns you know that we are looking at here and over five fights yuri only has three successful takedowns now that doesn't really mean that he can't do it um i just think that this is a spot where it's not normally his path and does he have the wrestling you know you've you've got alex who was working with glover obviously that that's always going to be the uh the storyline when you talk about takedown defense oh glover's in his corner that's gonna obviously be something but you know 
I, I do think it's a little overstated, and I do think that he can actually keep this fight standing. And I think that Yuri can, you know, throw in some level changes, you know, you know, change the pace a little bit, dictate the pace a little bit for Yuri because he's obviously so unorthodox. He's got a lot of power, different movements. You don't, you don't got a guy like Yuri in, in your training camp moving around like that. So it's obviously a little bit tougher to to kind of prepare for. But the other part that really always keeps pulling me over when I'm breaking this fight down to the um. Uh, to the Pereira side, is that how hittable Yuri is? I know 41% striking defense really worries me there, always has his hands down. Um, you know, he's a guy that either of these guys, you know, can catch you once, fight could be over. So you, they, they both have that, 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 that nuclear option where they could land it, they could land the big shot, they can get that finish. But the other part of it is I just think that Pereira is just more technical. I think he's very technical on the feet. I think that also a big, big thing for me here, and I and I said this last time when they were fighting, was the leg kicks, man. I just, it worries me a lot about Yuri, about how he gets chopped down. Um, you know, even Rakic, Rakic was having a, a ton of success on those leg kicks, and that really... Even to Yuri's credit, he's so damn tough. He just keeps moving forward and he he doesn't stop. So it's not that he he can't take it. Obviously, it hinders him, but he's such a warrior. He's going to keep moving forward. That bothers me a little bit on that top of that. So, And you also add in these guys both fight at, um, uh, for that UFC 300. Alex really, you know, although he's, you know, he's getting older and older, this guy's not taking damage. I mean, he just is not taking damage over these last few fights. He does not take many damage. He's knocking guys out quick. Even go back to the Strickland fight, to the, you know, all these fights, you know, really the Izzy fight was the most battled kind of fight. Everything else, he's kind of running through these guys um, or he's not taking a lot of damage. But I think that you've got, you know, a same thing Yuri, Yuri had big damage on his leg. He It was a battle with Rackets. Credit to him, he won. So I just think in this spot here, I, I got to go per, um, Perashka. No, not Perashka. I got to go Alex Pereira here. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go that way. I, the line is moving. And it's definitely interesting where this movement's coming from. Um, you know, you know, like you said, I, I feel like I'm hearing everybody per, um, keep saying Perashka. Pereira, Pereira, Pereira. And this line is shortening. So it's, uh, it's interesting to kind of see where that is. They're definitely respecting some of this money that's coming in on Yuri. Um, but I'm going to go, you know, Pereira probably by knockout and maybe kind of, you know, get some of that plus money. Um, anything else you want to add to this one? No, man. I, I mean, you got it pretty much uh, nailed there. We're on opposite sides of this one and it just kind of is what it is. I've always said with Alex, if that left hand lands, you're going down. It does not matter what else happens in that fight. So personally, I don't think that Alex is ever really a bad bet, but I think that uh, the spot is different in this one. You know, last time they fought, here he was coming off of a long injury layoff and he went straight into the title picture right after that injury layoff. He's had a couple fights now. He got to knock the rust off. He's been able to prepare for his opponent. And while you're right, Alex is not taking any damage in these fights. He's also an older man who's been extremely active recently. This is his second professional combat sports lifetime. So the repeated camps, the quick turnarounds, I don't know that that necessarily favors him. Now, he's a he's a consummate professional. He's a guy that's been doing it forever. So I can't really say that he's not going to be ready to fight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So he's going to be ready to come out there and go. But we also kind of see the same Alex Pereira every single time out. Yes, he learned a couple of judo tosses. Yes, he's been doing jujitsu <laughs> with Glover. But when he fights, it's the same thing. It's the same thing every time. And so I think Yuri's the one who can make some adjustments and come out and approach this a little bit differently and then find more success than he did the last time around. And he's in a better spot because it's not going to be a short notice situation. It's not going to be an injury situation. He's coming in here. He's had his eyes on Alex since the first time. So I think we're going to get a better version of Yuri. And for me, I bet Yuri the first time got to go back to him if I think he's going to have a slight advantage, right? All right. We are on opposite sides on that one. But I I mean, with the ticket you got at that plus money, that that's really a strong, strong spot there that you got. So we shall see what happens in the main event. But the next one we're going to talk about here is Ian Gary minus 140 against Michael Page around plus 115. And this is probably one of the more exciting fights on the card. I mean, just how much hype is behind both of these guys and, and really the talent, the excitement that they both bring. So how do you see this one playing out and uh, what's your play here? Yeah, man, I, I really like Ian Gary in this spot. You know, this this seems to be the UFC's move, right? They've They've brought in a guy like Michael Chandler. 
And they brought him into the UFC. He makes a devastating UFC debut, and then they immediately throw him to the Sharks, and he starts taking L's in the UFC. And I feel like that's the exact same game plan that they're using here in this spot. I don't think Michael Venom Page is a title contender. I don't think the UFC is going, MVP is the guy who's going to run this division for the next couple of years. MVP is a star. MVP is a guy that they can use to boost other fighters. MVP is a guy that they can throw in a co-main event on any given fight week, and people are going to tune in and be like, ah, that's a name I want to see. So this is the spot where they're turning him around off a win to make an absolute star out of Ian Gary. People hate Ian Gary. People hate Ian Gary's wife. And the UFC is going, how do we make people like this guy? We get him a dominant win over somebody who suddenly everybody loves. He fought a very close fight with Kevin Holland. He got taken down in that fight against Kevin Holland. Mm -hmm. He got his neck taken by Kevin Holland, a guy who is uh, inconsistent at best and refuses to follow a game plan. Now he's going in there against a young, hungry stud who we all know is headed for the top three of this division, more than likely. A guy that is training with Charles Dubronx Oliveira, a guy who is hungry, to prove that he's the best in the division and a guy that the UFC can get behind. He's only 26 years old. He's got a lot of time to become that Conor McGregor clone that he's always wanted to be. Man, I think this is just the perfect spot for Ian Gary to get in there, turn a couple heads, and the UFC give him a real push because he's got a name like Michael Venom Page on his record after this one. I like Gary. I think he's going to go to the grappling, which is going to surprise a lot of people. Man, I jumped in early. I got the submission prop at plus 1250. It's Ooh. down to about 9-1 to one these days, and I know people think I'm crazy. He's a point striker. He wants to play and stick on the outside. That's not how you beat Michael Venom Page. If you try to go tit for tat and strike with a guy like MVP, you are playing with death, my friend. He's going to be faster. He's going to hit harder. I think Gary's smart enough not to play that game. And the fact that he's training with somebody like Charles Oliveira gives me some confidence that there's going to be some grappling involved in this fight. I think Gary's going to use that wrestling that people just don't know is there. He's going to take him down. He's going to dominate him on the floor. And I think he's going to find his neck at some point. So uh, give me give me the favorite here, the small favorite, the unpopular Ian Gary. And then give me the big payday on that sub prop, baby. Let's go. Ooh, that's a juicy one, Clint. That's a juicy one. And I definitely got to agree here. I mean, I think the first thing is that, you know, Paige, we, anyone who breaks down Paige, we all know what we're getting. You know, his unorthodox style, his movement, the footwork, the range, all these things. And that's, you know, a lot of these things you do see even that Gary's got. Like, to, to your point, you know, he's on the outside. Gary has great footwork also, good kicks, you know, good movement. All those things are great. And I think that can help him. But Definitely one of the biggest kind of takeaways, I think, from uh, uh, for, for Paige was his last fight against Holland. And, and everything that you said, I definitely agree with where we're talking about, you know, the takedowns. That to me was really kind of opened my eyes more to really a pack year for Gary. Gary obviously is not a wrestler. I really do also believe he's going to wrestle. I do think that's going to be possible, that he's going to look to do that, slow it down a little bit. You know, Kevin Holland was two for five on takedowns, got some control time. Like I said, he was threatening also on the ground. That has got to really be something that we already know Gary is working on his skill set. We know he's, you know, he's talked about it. He wants to round it off. You know, he's got grappling. He's got some submission game that he just hasn't needed to show it. I think that's where their possibility can be. And also, I do think that Gary's going to have really a lot of success with those low kicks. I think that he's really going to be able to smash the front leg of um, a page. And I think that also that's going to slow down some of the movement of page. I think pages, you know, that's going to try to give him a flat tire where as he's kind of moving around and, and, and on his bike. I think that's going to help Gary as well, too. So I think he can mix it up pretty well get those takedowns, push them up against the fence, you know, minute win a little bit, you know, if it's going to be some top control or even clinching, because I don't think that he, you know, of course there's going to be moments or, and, you know, of them striking, but I think that he's really going to look to cut the distance, move forward, clinch, get a takedown, because again, we're all expecting this, hey, this, this glorified kickboxing match that these two high-level strikers are going to have, I don't really see it being that. And then the other part is the fact, the fact <laughs> that Paige is 37 years old. You know, he's it's he is no spring chicken coming over to here. You've got 11 year age gap between these two. And yes, Paige has looked great. All these things, He's you know, you know, outside of the UFC and in the UFC, you know, he gets a win over a name, uh, Kevin Holland. But again, to your point is Holland is just a wild man. He doesn't stick to a game plan. You know, you know, he's not a type of striker that Gary's going to be. So I think this is a spot we've got Gary. He's got good volume. He lands six 
a little over six significant strikes per minute while only absorbing a little over three. I think, again, the volume will be there. He's going to be risk adverse. And then when he can level change. So same thing. I, I uh, did not uh, did not play the submission, um, which is very intriguing. But um, I do like uh, Ian Gary here to uh, get the jump. Yeah, I might have to. You know, might, 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 might have to. <laughs> hey man, I'm glad we agree. That's awesome that you and I are on the same page here for this one. I am uh, definitely looking for it. And I just, but you know, before we wrap this preview up, I got to ask though, Kevin Holland, when was the last time he challenged for a title? Who was the last contender that Kevin Holland beat? Like that's a fun win for Michael Venom Page to get mm -hmm. into the UFC. And that was a razor close fight that a lot of Holland betters thought they won when it went to decision. So to me, that's not screaming top five. That's not screaming title challenger. So yeah, man, I'm, I'm glad we're on the same page. I'm glad we're seeing this one the same. I know a lot of people have love for Michael Venom Page, and somehow Ian Gary, that favorite line, is starting to creep up just a little bit, even though all that public money is on the dog. So I, I feel like we're in a good spot this week. Yeah, definitely. And 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 lastly, is is even not only what you're saying there, but Kevin Holland is openly saying, I don't want to fight for a title. I don't I just want to make, you know, I'll just have fun fight. So even that more, I mean, ha what level of Kevin Holland has the the frame, the reach, all these great attributes that he has, but it seems like the motivation is one of the biggest things that he's really is declining more and more it's as this guy, you know, like you said, paid. it's a that fight was a great fight for Paige to come in. Oh, Kevin's going to talk. And you got Paige, who's, you know, really, really, you know, you know, a showboater and, and high level. So it really played into Paige. But I think this is the other way where you're going to see a level of, of how good Ian Gary is mixing in some of those takedowns, too. So we agree on that one. And we will go to the next one here. We are going to talk Roman Delitze. He's minus 150 on the comeback here. We've got uh, Anthony Smith plus 120. And. We don't have to get into all the craziness about this fight and who is supposed to fight. And this one was all the, all the moving parts happen here. But um, how do you see this one going down here? Uh, you got Roman here again, minus 150, Smith plus 120. What's your thoughts? Man, this one's tough. So Roman Delize, um, he's very, very easy for me to cap, man. He either finishes you or he doesn't win. He's so reliant on the finish. That makes him exceptionally tricky and exceptionally dangerous to bet on or against because he's a guy that you know exactly what he's going to come out here and do. Do you have the right fighter to stop that is the question. So does he come out here and he head kicks Anthony Smith to oblivion? Definitely on the table with how long in the tooth Smith is these days. Does he get a takedown and get on top of Anthony Smith? He might. Anthony Smith has a tendency to take bottom position when it comes to grappling exchanges because he trusts that jujitsu of his so much. It's a little tricky with the leads. They coming back up here on 205 on short notice. He does suffer from cardio issues. He's never had the best gas tank in the world. So I wonder just how effective is he going to be over the course of a 15 minute fight if he doesn't get that finish and frankly we've seen anthony smith fighting really smart lately man against ryan span he decided to stick and move and stay away from the big power he got caught once he survived it and he stuck to the game plan and ended up winning a close decision i can see that being the same game plan here man these guys are probably equals on the ground in fact i might even favor anthony smith a little bit when it comes to the the grappling aspect of the game obviously the leads a Probably more physical, probably stronger. If he gets on top, he's probably going to have more wrestling success. But I'm not sure he's good enough of a top control guy to keep Anthony Smith down if he really wants to get up. And when they're on the feet, again, power edge goes to Delize. Technique, skill, speed, that's all probably on the side of Anthony Smith. So I worry about the durability. It makes it hard to put your money on the guy. But I could see another stick and move jab him in the face, don't let him touch you, and give me a, a decision for Anthony Smith. I don't actually have a bet yet on this one. I'm still kind of mulling it over. I want to see how these guys size up on Friday when they weigh in, when they face off, and uh, I'm sitting tight for the moment, but I think I'm picking Anthony Smith this week, man. Yeah, man, th this one was, when you go back and, and, and to your point, you go back and watch Roman Delice, man, I mean, the guy's extremely one-dimensional, and he's got terrible striking. So it's like, you know, if he can get you on the ground, we saw what he did with Jack Hermanson. I mean, the guy can be high level. I mean, his transitions, reversal, submission threat. He's a strong guy. He can really kind of bully some of these guys. But besides for that, you know, it's I really struggle to see what he does outside of this, like, you know, a big Hail Mary, you know, haymaker shot that lands on Smith. Because, yes, yeah, Smith's durability is absolutely a concern. There's no doubt his MMA mileage is, is, is wildly high and all those things. But Roman has been a guy that, doesn't really wrestle, 
you know, doesn't have the wrestling, struggles with cardio, you know, is a one-off, you know, his strikes are really one-off strikes where it's just big overhands and if he can land something, but it's never really like, you know, a couple jabs, work it, you know, work into space, throw an uppercut, you know, work the body. He's just throwing bombs and it can work against a guy like Phil Hawes. You know what I mean? It's going to work where you just got to touch the chin where, yes, again, Mitt can get clocked, but I you look at really the paths here. I mean, out of the last five fights, Roman doesn't even have a successful takedown. Um, and then even even more to that, you look at Smith. I mean, and again, you you said it, you know, I think it's the it's the speed, it's it's the striking, the cleaner striking of Smith, I think will be on the outside. I think he can, you know, really protect the chin and, and not look to just go in there and trade. There's no way he's gonna be looking to go in there and absolutely trade. And I also like that Smith is gonna I mean, I I love the leg kicks, and this is another spot where I think you know, there could be the leg kicks there. You saw the same thing that he did with v uh, Vitor Petrino, where Petrino was, you know, same thing. He was chopping at the legs and that forced Petrino to start to shoot, start to get in tight. Like he just didn't like that. And if that's Smith, if Smith really sees that being a path, I think that's where he's going to really chop away the land and really find opportunities. Because I just really think that Delitze striking is just shit. I just think it's absolutely terrible. And that's really where you can see some opportunities. And again, it's hard to backsmith a little bit. Again, to your point, it's, it's hard to backsmith a little bit just because what we've seen from him. But again, beating a guy like Petrino, who we're not sure really what he is now at this point. He was kind of trying to be this rising star and they were setting him up for Smith and he loses. So it's interesting to see kind of where that is. But Again, if Delitze really is not going to be able to wrestle or look for takedowns and just have a 15-minute rangy striking bout, I think that that's Smith all day, um, and I think that he's going to find opportunity there. I don't know if this has even got um, – uh, the, the the props are out on this one plus yet. Plus 350. The decision? The decision prop for Smith is plus 350. That, I mean, that's – very intriguing also I because mind. i mean it's it's going to be as i don't really see him finishing delitze i think delitze is tough enough where even and and smith i don't think is going to go for it either so i think this is where it's the second and third round could really be smith and smith is just going to pitter patter shots and just look to win on the scorecard so the the decision is really intriguing but uh but i do like smith getting this job done here uh in this one at the short price uh plus money price there I'm right there with you, man. I might have to jump in and actually lay a bet on it. You know, I'm I'm free rolling a little bit. I had Anthony Smith in his last fight, but plus 125 is not nearly as sexy as plus 400. So that's kind of <laughs> kind of the the juggling act that I'm doing here, trying to decide if I want to jump in or not. <laughs> yeah, no, that that that's a great number, but uh, but yeah, at least we're again we're we're both on the same page there. We both are looking at Anthony Smith with a um, possibility of sliding in there on the decision. Now, last fight we're going to talk about here is going to be Martin Boudet, big favorite here, minus 295 against Andre Arlovsky, plus 220. This opened up Boudet around plus, about minus 400. Uh, that's come in a little bit. You had uh, Arlovsky was around plus 330. That's come in. So you're definitely seeing some Arlovsky money here. But uh, how do you see this one going down? Man, I think this one is clear as day. Very, very simple for me. The favorite is justified. You know, I try to hold off of betting these old dogs when they get near the age of 40. We start worrying about them when they're 38, 39, especially when they're lifelong career martial artists like Andre Arlovsky and you're getting double-digit knockout losses. You got to be a little careful with those guys. Andre did a great job of reviving his career, man. He brought it back from the dead. He had a couple more good wins, but he's been facing a really low level of competition in the UFC and now he's on another three fights kid two of those mind you being by finish Martin Boudet is a guy who is really big for the division he's young enough for a heavyweight to still be considering coming into his prime he's only taken one loss at the UFC level and that was to an absolute physical monster in Shamil Gaziev he's not gonna have to worry about that with Arlovsky Arlovsky's become a decision merchant man point fight protect the chin survive squeeze your way to a decision where it's just close enough for the judges to give you the nod I don't think that's going to work here. Boudet is going to be more physical. He's going to be stronger. He's got more volume at this stage of, the, of their careers. And on top of that, man, Boudet just got promoted to BJJ Black Belt. I think that's a big thing that people are not going to be noticing in this fight is that Boudet has taken a rank up in his belt level. And not that that's necessarily going to mean he's going to jump for flying triangles in this fight or anything like that. But he's training with Parkin and Aspinall. And if we know anything about those guys, they love to use their hands, 
to set up level changes. And Boudet already loved just pushing people up against the fence and kind of grinding on them. Now if he can get them down, now if he can get on top of them, oh, that's starting to sound like music to my ears, man. I like Boudet in this spot. I parlayed him up. I know it's a big price tag. I do think he covers it, and I think we should take a look at that submission prop when it drops. It's not out on the state side of things yet, uh, but I'm seeing like plus 400, plus 350 at uh, Bet Online. so I'm fingers crossed that FanDuel and DraftKings will give me something a little sexier. But I like Boudet, and I wouldn't be shocked at all if he finishes here. Yeah, this one, I mean, I, I, there's absolutely a path here for Boudet. I mean, there's definitely a path for him here, to your point. He's definitely going to be, you know, it it's, could be a boring kind of, you know, situation where he does a lot of the, you know, push up against the fence, lean on you, wear down on you, you know, dirty boxing, keep you there, win positionally. And that's something that I think, you know, is possible where he does it. But the one issue for me is just, how sloppy he can be, you know, you know, he definitely is going to have the volume, you know, he's going to have that volume where he's going to push forward, have that volume and kind of cut in into range to get into the clinch by just throwing volume and then kind of wearing on you. And that is really where I think it could go, where he could kind of just hold him against the fence, keep him there. But I think the only reason is that this line, I just feel is still a little bit too wide where I think that if Marlowski is going to win, we know that he, when he re, uh, reinvented himself, he all of a sudden started to, I'm not going to swing and bang. I'm going to just protect the chin, be very, very patient, you know, work. You know, he's going to be much, a lot of times he's much smaller than a lot of these heavyweights. And, you know, he's utilizing that hand speed, the footwork and those kinds of things. That is going to have to be his path here is work at range, leg kick, couple of one-two combinations, get back on the outside and frustrate him. Because if this was in the apex, I would really like Boudet here. I would think that Boudet would be able to cut that distance a lot easier, push him up against the fence and those kinds of things. And even with Boudet, who does have, you know, again, so the, the grappling credentials, you know, over his last six fights, he's got one successful takedown. So, he, and he obviously doesn't need the takedowns to win, but it, it's something that where if he is unable to get it to the ground, yes, again, he can lean on Arlovsky, I think, for as many rounds as he can. But I do think that the speed at which that, that Arlovsky is going to have his hand speed i think it's going to be a little bit better yes 45 years old is some you don't want to be uh you know making your career backing 45 year olds but i think that at this price is not terrible here and i do lean the arlovsky side this is a spot i have not actually placed a bet on um but i am leaning that side and if even to get a little bit juicier i am kind of thinking that arlovsky out of his last 10 wins all of them were by decision i think that this is if he wins it's another decision price. And I think that could be a, a pretty sizable number um, if he's going to be able to get out of it. I don't think he's going to put Boudet away. I also think that Boudet does struggle a little bit with cardio, not that Orlovsky, some cardio machine, but I think fueling this relentless takedown ability, I don't think he's able to do. And I think that's where you could possibly see Orlovsky finding success, working at range. And that's kind of the way that he's going to possibly be looking to go here so i do lean the arlovsky side here i do like via points as another little sprinkle spot there but um yeah i i, I kind of got to go with it i'm a little nervous about boudet though at, the, at this big number i'm a little nervous of boudet but uh, that's my play there all right there you have it so uh we're we, i think we i think we split there i think we kind of split there uh on, on our picks but um Two I'm two, excited, think, man. Yeah. I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be a great card. Um, and uh, and also, I you know appreciate you coming on today, Clint. And, um, you know, good luck on your bets. And I appreciate it, my man. My man, appreciate the invite. This was fun. Thank you very much. And uh, let's both make some money on Saturday. Hey, sounds good. Sounds good. So uh, there you have it for UFC 303. And um, if you want to become a client, link down in the description. And let's cash this weekend. Good luck. We'll see you next week.